Hey Aries, how are you? It's me, Lauren B. Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. As always, Aries, your readings are timeless. So I trust that you get here when you are meant to be here. And all 12 of the Zodiac sign readings, they're all for you. They're all part of the collective story. So feel free to bop around, put your thing down, flip it and reverse it. Put a little frankincense on for you, Aries. I'm going to use um, an interesting combination today of decks that I don't normally put together, but I'm going to use the Spirit Animal Oracle and I'm going to use the Queen of the Moon Oracle put together, which is um, special. It feels special. Um, you have an interesting energy. Going off of the, the last reading, you were in a bit of a tough spot. You were definitely in a, in a bit of a of rough patch trying to kind of figure it out. And your energy feels a lot lighter now, which is really nice. Um, and it feels like you, you have submitted to a lot of the surrender, but there is like a few like little triggering moments coming in. Maybe you might be thinking some of them might be like tests from the universe, right? Kind of testing your resolve, testing your surrender, all of these kind of things. But, you know, um, it's also important to remember that sometimes when we feel like we're being tested, um, tests are truly an opportunity for us to prove to ourselves that we are growing and that we are evolving and that we're outgrowing certain aspects of ourselves that we really did want to work on and improve. So I think that's actually a good sign that you're being tested because it's just confirming to you that you are growing and you are moving into a new place. So let's pray and then we'll start pulling out some cards for you. Very good. Very good, Aries. Father God, thank you for bringing me and my Aries in today. I ask that you give me wisdom, clarity, and discernment to deliver these messages accurately for Aries' highest of love, light, alignment, and assignment. We praise you. We love you. We thank you always to the utmost high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Aries. It's interesting, while I had my eyes closed, I started seeing, and this has come up a few times, uh, a roulette board, a roulette board. Um, so, so that's really interesting. It's almost like an anything goes and anything goes, kind of leaving it up to chance or leaving it up to fate kind of thing. It's, it's that energy that sometimes we go, you know what, I'm sick of trying to figure it out, you do it. Like, you just tell me, you just tell me what to do because I'm sick of trying to figure it out. I'm sick of trying to drive this car because I feel like I'm driving it off a cliff. So. What, anything goes. You you let me know. It's the first card. Turtle spirit. Slow and steady wins the race. 62, that breaks down to an 8. 8s talk about um, infinity, right? Infinite potential. Um, but 8s also talk about karmic cycles, which sometimes we use interchangeably with timelines, right? Karma can be good. Karma can be bad. It's just a vibration. It's just a balancing act. Um, this is interesting. Slow and steady wins the race. Turtles are a very ancient animal they live a long time longevity is the name of the game when it comes to the turtle and because they are a water creature water represents our emotional state it also represents our unconscious or our intuitive abilities so i actually think that you've learned to be a little bit more gentle maybe a little bit more of this surrender and this ease that you're feeling is learning to just slowly allow yourself to work through your emotions not trying to push through them not trying to bury them down a lot of these might be emotions that maybe coming up in waves. I'm hearing they might be coming up in waves, right? And, and you might be realizing that there's a link to um, your childhood or things that happened to you when you're in adolescence or things that were said to you when you were at school or, or relationships that you had very early on when you were still kind of formulating the, the dynamics of how you thought love and relationships and, and um, community and, and social groups were all supposed to work, right? So this is kind of allowing things to come up and deal with it kind of in your own pace a little bit piecemeal, but not trying to take all of your shadow work in at one time too, which oftentimes can overwhelm us and then throw us into the trenches. It, it comes it comes in waves, it comes in phases. Um, and I think that this is also um, allowing room for a bit of surprise. Again, this, leave it up to chance, anything goes, that's fine. Like, I'll take it as it comes, I'll take it as it comes. And I'll, and I'll be able to discern if I wanna take it or if I wanna leave it based off of how it's affecting my emotional body. And I'm gonna sit with it, and I'm gonna process it and then I'll make my move from there. So I actually think that that's really nice for you. Um, and it does indicate again that you're expanding your ability um, of your potential and potential relationships and experiences you are able to walk into moving into a new karmic timeline. So that is really nice. Okay, we'll take these. Getting a lot of animals. You're getting a lot of animals actually. The abundant universe will provide 10 beautiful so again tens represent an external completion usually of a cycle 
So that's really nice. And part of this is um, leaving things up to chance is you um, just trusting that you do live under an open heaven, that you do live underneath a benevolent universe. And if you have angels and you have guides and you got angel numbers and you got feathers and you got shit everywhere, that they're, they're not going to put you to shame. Right? If God made you a promise, if he said that you're going to have a person, you're going to be successful, you're going to live your purpose, then that thing's going to come to pass, right? There, There's no one who can stop it, and there's no one who can bring it in sooner than it needs to be. That what you need, whether it's experiences, whether it's provision, whether it's um, connections, they will be brought to you. And, you know, the buffalo is also a herd animal as well, so I feel like a lot of this is also finding... A little bit of um that soul family, that soul tribe kind of energy. People that you're comfortable with, people that are like you as well. Because some of the confliction that you might have been feeling in the past is realizing that um there might be people around you that you do love and you do care about, right? It's not like you just want to throw them out on the street like like Tuesday's trash, but you're you're moving and you're growing into another kind of Aries, right? You're taking on new mindsets. You're trying to operate in different behaviors. And so often um, as intuitive and empathic people, we become like sponges. We absorb our environment. We absorb the emotions of other people. So if you're able to work in new relationships, new soul tribe, new family with people that are a little bit more like you, a little bit more forward thinking, maybe they're ambitious, maybe they're on a spiritual walk too. People that won't look at you like you're crazy when you start talking to them about receiving angel numbers or sign or your intuition or all of that stuff, right? There, there is that coming in as well. Um, I, I do sense that there is a greater sense of emotional support systems that are going to start filtering in for you pretty soon, which is which is really nice. Um, and I had done your monthly reading for the Patreon for April. Um, I do gift it to you guys over here on YouTube. It will be up in a few days. Um, and, and the whole theme of it was like strange and unusual, strange and unusual that there is like a strange um, series of serendipitous events that you aren't expecting. You aren't expecting, which um, I, I think is why this energy of kind of surrender and I'm just going to take what comes um, and I'm, I'm just going to see what happens. I think that's why that energy is preceding that. So that way when these strange and unusual things come, they're not going to knock you off balance in April as much as maybe they would have in March, right? Because you're having a little bit more mental clarity by not trying to control everything so much. Now you also have Canary Spirit, sing your own song. And I love that this bird is on a flute, right? It's about finding a new rhythm, finding a new rhythm. And going back to this emotional, watery aspect, right? If you, if you look at the ocean, sometimes it has these huge waves and these breaks and these chops and it can feel really chaotic. But when you're able to kind of recenter and rebalance yourself in a place of faith and trust, you're able to move into more of an ebb and a flow. And that just vibrationally is more like a melody, right? It's being able to keep a tempo. So this is you being able to kind of maintain a little bit of a straighter walk, not having to go down so many divine detours, right? There also is a big ground with all these animals. There's a grounding energy. Maybe you guys are spending more time outside. Maybe you're going on runs, nature walks, um, eating root vegetables, salt baths, things like that, just to kind of purge out any of that excess energy as you are um, very gently and, and slowly making your way through these waves of emotional processes that is allowing a greater rhythm and a routine that helps you maintain this new balance, this, this new narrative, this new attitude that you're really starting to harness right now, which is beautiful. It really is kind of flowing up, flowing upstream a little bit more than that kind of downstream, a little bit more of a, a struggle energy that that you were dealing with in the last reading which is so gorgeous to end on this card for this first row is otter spirit you are never alone 42 and that breaks down to a six and six talk about ebbs and flows reciprocation equal energy exchanges and balances on both sides and the thing about otters that is really beautiful is that they're incredibly and i actually that, that's funny because i actually saw an otter this morning online um they're extremely friendly they talk a lot about um, like soulmate relationships and soulmates. I like to say are like ice cream flavors, right? There's a million different kinds. Your kids can be your soulmates. Your, your siblings can be your soulmates, your best friends, your lovers, a mentor that you had, right? There's soulmates coming in a lot of different shades and that's important to, um, reiterate. Um, and that, that is very important because sometimes we get a little hung up on that, but this card also, um, technically could be considered like a two of cups card, right? Which is that a little bit more of the traditional romantic union energy and this is reminding you that one you're not alone even in moments when you might feel lonely that that's different than being alone because 
you are an extension of creation. You are a child of God. You have angels and you have family on the other side and you have guides and you have this whole universe surrounding you, backing you, gently helping you move on to the next phase. And there are people in your environment, in the flesh, right? That do love you and they do care about you. And you know, maybe they live a couple doors down or maybe they live a town over or maybe they're online, maybe they're on YouTube or they're on a social media platform, but there are people around you um, in spirit and in person that do love you and there is support for you. So if you're feeling as though maybe you're hitting a little bit of a, a wave and you're trying to work through that process and maybe you need a pick me up or you need a little perspective, right? Or you need to be able to maintain your authenticity. Again, um, sometimes when we evolve into new aspects of ourselves, when we, we see the contrast between the new us and our old environments or the old social dynamics we are in, sometimes we can be prone to kind of backtrack or backslide a little bit because it's uncomfortable. It's not always doing it, it's maintaining it. And so if you need help remembering why you start this process or um, uh, encouragement to keep going in, in the direction that you're going in, which is onward and upward. It is also a bit of advice to reach out to some people, right? Send an email, make a call, send a text message, say a prayer, like whatever it is, because there is love and there is support. There is community around you in a variety of different aspects, but, um, all fire signs as a whole, very much like the earth signs, can be a little stubborn and prideful. And I know that because I have a lot of fire in my chart. Um, and so, don't be afraid to be vulnerable because being able to be emotionally vulnerable without emotionally wrecked, if that makes any sense, that's something that you're really supposed to be harnessing and growing into, right? Six, reciprocation. If you ask for a little help, if you ask to have a little talk, if you ask to vent to someone, that support will be given back to you in this new karmic cycle, in this new timeline, in this new season. So remember that it's very important because um, oftentimes God will separate us from people, places, and situations so he can work on us, right? I, I like to say sometimes he'll break you down in private so he can build you up in public. But now is a time of learning how to reintegrate with people, how to learn how to trust people again, right? Um, not having to do everything on your own. This is um, an aspect of this new season that is really important for you to keep in mind. And always, you, use your common sense, use your discernment, use your intuition. Not everybody is going to be for you, but we're trying to work past that narrative that everyone is against you as well, because that's not healthy energy to sit in either. So again, balance, we're creating balance now and particularly a new balance, a new rhythm. Hold please for production. Ooh, coffee time. You gotta love, you gotta love coffee time, Aries. <clears throat> Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Dragonfly spirit. You got all animals. If you guys aren't spending um time outside, I would try. Um, because all all of these animals really talk for me a lot about grounding. Um, also pay attention to um animal totems and your spirit animals right now. Your totem is the um kind of animal energy signature you you kind of harness throughout your entire life where uh spirit animals will come in and out depending on what you need to harness at that particular time i do a series on my channel called the untitled totem so that might be something you you might want to look into i actually did an episode on the buffalo and i did an episode on the dragonfly now what's beautiful with this coming out for you is one this is card number 22 22 is a master number so this is something that you are mastering right now so that way you can move on to another lesson and um, truth transcends illusion. So again, this is a lot of that um, the abundant universe will provide. There's a lot of mirroring here in the sense of faith, trust. I'm going to release my expectations of people. I'm going to release um, my expectations of what is and is not supposed to happen moving forward. Right? I'm going to let God surprise me. I'm going to let the universe come in. I'm going to let the angels come in. And I'm going to let them bring me opportunities that I couldn't have imagined in my head. And if, even if things in the natural with my naked eye, they don't look like they're moving. Or it doesn't look like someone's coming. Or it doesn't look like um, I'm gaining any headway. Right? I know that all things are established in the spirit before they come down into the natural. And for them to start trickling down, I need to come into a vibrational alignment. And the way I do that is by faith. And the way I do that is by trust. You have to believe to see it, right? It's like Peter Pan. Like you have to, be, you have to believe it in order to see it. Um, if you have to see it in order to believe it, then that's not faith. And when we plant seeds of intention in the ground, whether it's business, whether it's love, whether it's our gifts and abilities, whether whatever it is, right? You need to put faith on that thing because faith is a fertilizer. It's miracle grow. And something that 
the dragonfly really indicates is maturity. You are mastering um, this, this, it's like the tail end. It feels like you're at the very tail end of this um, kind of uh, season of emotional and spiritual maturing, which is a lot of what the dragonfly pulls in. It's not just um, emotionally maturing, right? Some things aren't going to work out and some things aren't for me. And it, it just means that, you know, if that relationship or if that job or if that opportunity, if that door didn't open for me, it's because there's a better door. There's a better partner. There's a better environment. There's a better thing for me, right? Um, de delay does not mean denied. Um, life's rejection is God's protection. Like again, these positive affirmations that are going to kind of keep you in alignment and help you develop this new rhythm and flow. Um, but also spiritual maturity that when things don't come to pass, when we want them to pass in the exact time that we'd like it, we don't fall into that kind of despair of God doesn't love me. The universe is against me. No one cares, right? And it's really easy to fall into that, especially if we're going through shadow work, especially if we're going in one of those kind of those divots, one of those dips. But again, all things in balance. So when I dip, we dip, you dip, and then we got to come back up. We have to come back up. And something that's really interesting about the dragonfly as well is that it, it spends its formative years in water right seeped in this emotional psychic intuitive process and um they're they're quite opaque there's not much color to them but as they mature right they master their maturity and they elevate they upgrade upwards the closer they get to the sun the more color that comes into them they become more iridescent they start to sparkle they start to shine meaning that when we move past our shadow aspects we do our shadow work which is extremely necessary but we do it so that way we can enjoy our light so we can sit in joy and peace and happiness and feel contented and feel possibility and hope, right? In things big and things that are small. So that as you move out of these emotional processes, which is very heavily tied into your shadow work, you get to move closer to your highest vibrational self, right? Where all things are possible and life is good and you're good too. And with that, you get more color. It's like spring, right? And the, the leaves grow back on the trees and the flowers start to bloom and you can actually see the grass again because it's not covered in snow and crap. Again, it's like life coming back into you, spring springing up from within you as well, color coming back into your cheeks. Um, uh, there's a lot of, it's funny, it's interesting the way they're giving it to me. It's like, as you um, are mastering this emotional and spiritual maturity, you actually get to move into your inner child energy, right? Which is fun and it's playful and it's just like this otter spirit, right? It's community and it's like, let's play. Let's look at the clouds. It's like very um, imaginative and it's exciting. Which, you know, who, who wants to sit? Ooh, okay, okay, Aries. Another eight, five, six, seven, eight. Seahorse spirit, watch and wait, watch and wait, Aries. And you know, what's really interesting about seahorses is that they are a good luck totem from the sea. So that is a really beautiful thing. And you wouldn't suspect that something so small um, would pack such a big punch symbolically with, with it being such a good luck totem. Um, so there's actually something about... <clears throat> And I was just saying before, right, about things big and small, that there may be um, some opportunities or um, some people coming in in this new season, right? Right, right over this kind of two cupsy otter spirit card um, that may seem almost insignificant. Pay attention to the things that may seem insignificant. Offers, opportunities, doors, people coming in, um, experiences, all things like that, that there's a, there's a sense of big blessings in small packages for you right now, Aries. So again, if something comes in and it doesn't seem like it's a big deal or nothing will come of it or, you know, it's kind of insignificant, look twice at it. Look twice at it. L -l -l follow the breadcrumbs. Like, follow the, the yellow brick road because it might just lead you to the Wizard of Oz this time. Um, and, and this is also an aspect of maturing as well because so often we can look at people, places, and things and go... That's not going to lead to my blessing. That's not going to be my person. That's not going to be the door for me, right? Because it's not coming in the the, the, the uh, buh, buh, in the package that we had originally assumed it was going to come in. But, and I was doing this in the live stream yesterday, there is this collective energy of God coming in to surprise us through the way we receive messages, the way we receive confirmations, the way um, we think things are going to come in, the way we think our blessings are going to happen. It's being shifted because there's this element of surprise that God wants to bring in for us because he loves to surprise his children. But at the same time, we have this negative connotation with surprises and the unknown because we always think it's going to be 
crash, bang, tower moment. And there's a real rewriting of that, right? And so, um, again, to, to reiterate, if there's something, you know, um, that, that doesn't seem like it's a big deal or seem like it's going to go anywhere, give it, give it a second, give it a second look, see, like maybe, you know, follow, follow the yellow big road. Cause there is a sense of big blessings in small packages. So Aries, I'm going to take this over on the Patreon and I'm going to do an extended reading for you. So if you're interested in your extended reading or the monthly readings for the end of March or the monthly readings coming up for April, the Patreon is the top link in, top link in the description box. It also has all of the decks I use in the channel, all of my social media links. I do different stuff on different platforms. So if you have them, go follow me there if you feel so inclined. And my email is in there for personal readings in case you want something a little bit more individualized for you in your own life. Um, and until I see you next time, Aries, I love you. You stay prayed up and you stay blessed and you stay sweet and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.